Good evening, everybody. Uh, welcome and thank you for signing in to the City of San Mateo's um, Accessory Dwelling Unit uh, workshop. Um, we're just starting the workshop and we're going to give um, attendees a couple of more, a few more minutes just to sign on and make sure that we have all those that are interested, um, giving them a chance to kind of sign on. So give us about uh, three or four minutes and then uh, we will uh, start soon. Thank you. Thank you for your patience. Great, thank you. Okay, um, I think we're gonna get started in just a minute here. We have a um, pretty good uh, list of um, attendees. So we're just gonna try to give uh, a few minutes to allow everybody to log on uh, to the meeting and we'll start here briefly. Vamos a comenzar el taller en un par de minutos. Mientras esperamos que otras personas se terminen de integrar. Gracias. Okay, well, I think we're gonna go ahead and get started. Um, I wanna welcome everybody to the Accessory Dwelling Unit and Junior Accessory Dwelling Unit Ordinance Update Discussion. Um, public participation is a very vital part of the planning process, so we appreciate everybody coming out and uh, attending this meeting. Um, before we begin, I just wanna uh, uh, announce that we do have uh, interpretation services available. And right now I'm gonna introduce uh, Mary uh, Antonini and Marina Martinez from uh, Bilingva. Uh, good evening. Eh, para las personas que necesitan interpretación al español, eh, dentro de un momentito van a ver un globito en la parte inferior de su pantalla. Eh, háganle clic a ese globito y escojan español para escuchar eh, la presentación en español. For those people who are not bilingual, uh, in, uh, they're, they're in a moment, I'm sorry, in a moment you're going to see a little globe at the bottom part of your screen that says interpretation. Please click on that and then choose uh, English or Spanish, whatever is more comfortable for you, so you can listen to the presentation in that language of choice. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Um, my name is Philip Brennan. Um, I'm an associate planner here with the city of San Mateo. I just want to take a quick moment to introduce uh, staff that's also participating, uh, but maybe not necessarily speaking during the meeting. Um, we have uh, Christina Horsberger from our, she's our community um, uh, director. We have Zachary uh, Dahl, um, our deputy director. We have Julia Klein, um, planning manager. Uh, Rendell Bustos, senior planner. We have Alice Chen uh, from our building department. And Mary Wei, who is our uh, workshop uh, administrator. So before we begin the presentation, I'm, I'm asking um, if everyone can uh, just participate in a very brief poll. It's just two questions. Should probably not take more than 30 seconds to answer. We're just trying to get a better understanding of who's uh, in attendance tonight and what relationship you have with the city and interest you have in ADUs. So Mary, can you please uh, bring up that poll?
if you could just tell us about uh, what's your relationship with the community and also what is your interest in ADUs? Thank you. Just give it a few more seconds here. Okay, great. Uh, Mary, if you wanna end the polling there. So that's pretty interesting. Uh, we have obviously a lot of residents from San Mateo and a lot of interest in ADUs, which is great. Um, so you're at the right place. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, move forward with the presentation here. Uh, Mary, do you want to take down the poll or? Or do we just X out of the uh, poll window? You can X out of it. OK. So I want to give a uh, breakdown of the agenda tonight. Um, we're going to be discussing, uh, providing a little bit, back, a bit of background on why we're here. We're gonna discuss the basics of what an ADU and a JADU is. We'll outline some of the key terminology tonight in terms of uh, what uh, words and um, terms that you'll be discussed. Um, we'll go over the provisions of the new state law. We'll have a Q and A period to answer any um, clarifying questions that you uh, may have. And then we'll discuss the remaining areas of discretion and we'll ask you to participate in a, in, a, in a brief poll. So a good starting point for our presentation is to discuss why we're here. Uh, there's a lot of interest in our city and throughout the state regarding ADUs. The primary reason is that in January 2020, several new ADU housing bills came into law and took aim at easing local zoning controls, uh, reducing fees, expediting the permitting process associated with ADU development as well as to allow greater flexibility and design options for uh, property owners. The, largest, uh, the larger purpose uh, from the state's perspective was to uh, facilitate another way to address housing needs uh, across the state, which is an issue we're all familiar with and uh, living here in the Bay Area and specifically along the peninsula. And finally, we're here to hear, we're here to hear from the community on how you want to see ADU uh, development in your city to look like. That feedback will help uh, in the development of a new local ordinance, which will likely be brought to the city council uh, before the end of the summer. So what do these new laws mean for you? Um, the new laws provides uh, property owners greater flexibility and opportunity to develop their lots uh, any number of, uh, for any number of reasons. It could be to accommodate a growing family, um, allowing a young adult fresh out of college a place to live independently and, uh, while they're saving on costs. Um, and as they start building their careers, uh, many property owners build ADUs to provide a place uh, to live uh, for their aging family members or loved ones. And others simply build ADUs for the sole purpose of serving as an additional income uh, resource. Uh, regardless of the reasons, ADU development increases housing stock in our city, which helps address our local and even regional housing needs. So what exactly is an accessory dwelling unit or an ADU? ADUs are known by many different names, including second units, uh, guest houses, casitas, granny units, and in-law units. The state defines an ADU to mean uh, an attached or detached residential dwelling unit that provides complete independent living uh, facilities for, more, uh, for one or more uh, persons and is located on a lot with a primary residence. ADUs are required to include permanent provisions for sleeping, eating, cooking, and sanitation. And finally, ADUs provide a lot of design flexibility. They can be attached or detached, constructed as an addition or as a conversion of an existing space or accessory structure, such as a garage, um, a shed or a pool house. And under state law, manufactured or tiny homes meeting certain requirements can be defined as ADUs as well. A junior accessory dwelling unit or a JADU for short um, is contained entirely within the walls of an existing or proposed single family residence. 
This is typically a conversion of an existing bedroom or an attached garage. One of the distinguishing differences between an ADU and a JADU is that a JADU may um, share sanitation facilities with the existing um, or proposed residents. So before we go into any specifics of what the new state law uh, permits, um, it's important to go over some key terms that you'll be hearing throughout the presentation. We'll have plenty of time to, at the end of the presentation, or, or at least this segment, to answer any questions and provide clarity before asking you to respond to a few uh, poll questions. We'll begin with floor area. A floor area is simply the area of a structure measured horizontally to the outside surface of the wall. So in the example shown here on the slide, you'll have a structure measuring 20 feet by 50 feet, which means the floor area for the structure would be 1,000 square feet. The second key term that you'll often hear when discussing floor area is floor area ratio. Um, you get floor area ratio, or FAR for short, by calculating the total floor area on a given site and dividing it by the lot area. So using the same example, if we divided 1,000 square feet, that 1,000 square foot structure by 5,000 square feet, we would end up with 20% FAR for the site. So each of our zoning districts prescribe um, its own uh, maximum FAR for the development. Um, for, for instance, our R1C zoning districts um, um, provide, allow a maximum of 50% FAR. Another key term you'll hear being referenced is setback or required setback area. A setback is the minimum required distance a building must uh, be from a given property line. The area uh, within a required setback is generally required to be unobstructed by any structure or building. The red areas on this example, um, on this illustration, represent the front, side, and rear setbacks of the lot. The gray area in the center of the uh, lot is the buildable area where you see the building outline there. So that's where you can build the structure, um, uh, your home. So the last set of terms I wanna familiarize everyone with has to do with building height and how we measure, um, how we measure it in the city of San Mateo. So building height is the vertical distance measured from existing grade to the top plate line of a structure. So this is a bit different than most um, other cities which typically measure to the highest point along a roof, um, which is typically the roof ridge or the roof peak. The plate line is where the top of the wall assembly, which is the frame and the studs of the wall meet the roof structure. So when we discuss building height, we're speaking about the top plate um, of a structure in relation, let's see if I can, we're talk, this, is, this would be the top plate, oops. So this would be the top plate. Um, we're talking about the top plate of a structure in relation to the existing grade. So as you can see in our example, you can have a structure that measures 17 feet tall to roof peak, but technically that building is 10 feet tall in terms of actual building height as we define it in the city. The next few slides will be discussing the provisions of the new state ADU regulations. Um, our existing local ordinances are not in total compliance uh, with the new state regulations. So we're currently imposing uh, only those aspects of our code which are not in conflict with the state. And those areas which are in conflict, we're defaulting to the state regulations which we'll be discussing um, now. So a good place to start in terms of what the new state regulations allow is with the state exempted ADU or, or what we call a by right ADU. So what the state is mandating is that a city allow a property owner to construct at minimum an 800 square foot ADU of at least 16 feet in height with side and rear setbacks of no more than four feet. And this by right ADU is allowed to, regardless of any local uh, development standards, such as lot coverage, um, floor area ratio, or any other requirements that would otherwise preclude it from being built. So as you can see, or you can imagine, this really opens up the door for ADU development. Um, I wanna provide an, an example to help illustrate what the state uh, provision allows. So generally speaking, remaining floor area ratio on a given lot typically is what governs or determines how um, a lot can be further developed. Um, in this example, we have a 5,000 square foot lot located in an R1C zoning district, which has a maximum 50% FAR. 
um, meaning that the floor area maximum for the lot would be 2,500 square feet. In other words, that's how much structure or building you could build on that lot. Um, so as you can see in this scenario, uh, we have a lot that's already fully developed with 2,500 square feet of home. Um, what the state provision allows is that despite it being fully developed in terms of floor area, the property can still be, uh, or the property owner can still build the state exempted 800 square foot uh, by right ADU. So the updated uh, law prescribes ADU size for local agencies, which don't already have an ordinance or uh, compliant ordinance in place. Um, size allowances are based on ADU development type, which can be broken down into general categories um, of attached, detached, and conversion ADUs, uh, in addition with the buy right ADU. Attached ADUs are just that. Um, they are construct uh, new construction ADUs, which are attached to either the primary residence or accessory structures. Um, we're currently defaulting to the state's uh, regulation that permit an attached ADU to be up to 50% um, of the primary residence's size. Um, detached ADUs are completely separated from the primary residence. The state allows a detached ADU to be up to 1,200 square feet, provided there's enough available floor area allowance remaining on the lot. Um, any new structure associated with the ADU must abide by the four foot side and rear setback requirement. Um, in the example shown here, you have a 1300 square foot primary residence on that same 5,000 square foot lot um, that we've been using as an example. Um, so there's plenty of remaining floor area allowance to work with. Um, as such, you could potentially build up to a um, 1,200 square foot detached ADU as permitted by the state uh, regulations. And finally, we have ADU conversions. Um, and these are converted areas contained entirely within the footprint of an existing uh, residence or accessory structure. Um, as such, you can utilize existing setbacks, even legal non-conforming setbacks. Um, and there is no size limitation on the area being converted uh, since it's um, not creating a new structure. And finally, JADUs must be contained entirely within the footprint of a single family residence. Um, they're permitted to be up to 500 square feet in size and require exterior access from the main residence. Um, the JADU must include at least an efficiency kitchen, which includes a cooking facility uh, with appliances, a food preparation uh, counter, and storage cabinets. Um, there's no required parking associated with JADU development. Uh, one interesting provision of the new state regulations is that it allows an ADU and a JADU uh, to be combined on the same lot with a single family residence. So you effectively can have up to three dwelling units on the same residence um, on the same lot, or excuse me, three dwelling units on the same lot. So with uh, building height, we're gonna spend just a little bit of time discussing building height since it's proven to be um, a topic of interest. The state requires that any new construction ADU be allowed to be at least 16 feet in height. Um, provided here is, um, as a point of reference, is an accurately scaled depiction of a single family dwelling. The solid um, orange line at the very top um, shows the 32 foot maximum roof peak height and the dashed orange line um, below it represents the maximum permitted building height um, measured to top plate for single family dwellings in our R1 and R2 zoning districts. The dashed blue line below that shows the, re the state required minimum building height. Um, we've discussed how we measure building height in San Mateo. So when the state speaks to an, uh, allowing an ADU to be at least 16 feet in height, we're talking about allowing a plate height of at least 16 feet in our city. Um, this is an important distinction um, as most cities measure building height from grade to um, the highest point, um, which we, as mentioned before, is usually the roof peak or ridge um, as shown here in this single story example. Um, for those that are interested or are curious, um, in our county uh, of the 20 incorporated um, cities and towns in our county, 10 have simply um, limited the maximum height for a detached ADU to 16 feet, um, as shown in the graphic. Um, three have, three have um, uh, established a criteria where, uh, for example, if an ADU is built within a certain setback or if it's over a certain size, 
it's limited or capped at 16 feet. And one other uh, city um, has limited detached ADUs to 17 feet. So shown here in, in uh, this example is a two-story ADU design with a plate height of 16 feet, um, which meets the state's minimum requirement and a roof peak of 23 feet. Um, it should be noted that the city hired a consultant to do a height study, um, looking at the feasibility of two-story ADU designs, um, utilizing the 16 foot maximum plate height and 24 foot um, maximum roof peak height. And the study found that uh, with certain um, architectural designs, a two-story ADU um, was feasible um, or is feasible um, uh, utilizing those height parameters. So with our next example, I just wanted to show that another two-story ADU um, over a garage, except this time the building height is now at 20 feet um, measured to top plate with an overall um, peak height at 28 feet. And so I just wanted to make note that we'll be revisiting building height uh, for detached ADUs as one of our poll questions later. We're looking at to establish both the maximum height measured to plate uh, for detached ADUs as well as the maximum roof peak height um, in our new ordinance. State regulations uh, for parking associated with ADU development is one off street parking space per ADU uh, or per bedroom, whichever is less. Over time, the state regulations have become increasingly more permissive in terms of not making off street parking an impediment to ADU development. The recent regulations continue uh, that trend and, and now specify that replacement parking is no longer required uh, when a garage or a carport is demolished or converted in conjunction with the development of an ADU. Um, even further, the state provides a number of parking exemptions that preclude the need uh, to provide off-street parking associated with ADUs. Um, generally speaking, um, most residents, if they're gonna qualify for one of these exemptions, it's gonna be uh, exemption number one, which is um, when your ADU is located within one half mile walking distance of uh, public transit. Um, and most of the city does qualify for, for that. However, approximately 10% of residential properties um, in our city are not located within one half mile of walking distance and, and therefore um, aren't eligible for that parking exemption. A special provision of the new state law now provides a pathway for homeowners to defer um, a correction of certain building code violations um, for up to five years, um, provided the correction of the violation is not necessary um, or required to protect health and safety. And this obviously would help legalize many existing ADUs that uh, cannot be brought up to 100% code compliance. Um, another uh, special provision is uh, for multifamily ADUs. Um, ADUs are now permitted in multifamily zoning districts. Um, you can have multiple ADUs within non-livable space. So we're talking about um, your boiler room, a storage room, a carport or garage. Um, you can have up to 25% of the existing units of that multifamily development, or at least one, and up to two detached ADUs. Um, however, those eight, uh, ADUs in, that, in this scenario are capped at 16 feet uh, with four foot side and rear setbacks. So that precludes, or that, that um, concludes our um, initial presentation. Um, I, I know that this is a lot of technical information. Um, the state law is very nuanced. Um, and so I'm sure there's lots of questions and so I wanna make myself available to answer any questions. Um, um, please use the um, raise your hand feature in uh, the Zoom portal. And um, we'll have Mary work through those questions as best she can. So Philip, uh, right now I have a few people raising hands. Um, I'm just gonna start with the first, um, Lori Wadnuki. I, if you can unmute yourself. Hi, Lori. I, this is just a technical issue. My okay. hand is actually lowered. Okay. okay, I'll lower your hand and I'll go to the next one. Thank you. And let's see, let me just, okay. Uh, Jim Whelan. 
Would you like uh, to th speak? Yes, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, one of the earlier slides showed uh, the two-story mm -hmm. you and thank you for putting this presentation on, I should say first. Thanks a lot. Sure. Showed the two-story uh, 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 ADU and it went up to a plate line, but then mm -hmm. there was a shed roof above the plate line, similar to it's I'm having a hard time figuring out where the where the plate line is. It says the highest plate line above. If you look at the, for example, yeah. you're seeing right here yep. with the blue roof. There's two different plate lines on that. Yeah. So what that in that example or what that particular design in mind is, um, that would be um, like a dormer. But the main plate line would be um, um, that lower plate line that you'd see. So the plate um, line for the dormer is doesn't is not counted as a plate line. No, because the plate line is associated with the main wall assembly. Wow. 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 Okay, thank you very much. Sure. Okay. Um, next up, we have Robert Miller. Robert, would you like to talk? Hi, Robert. Yes, hello. Thank you. And again, I also thank you for this. It was compact and informative, and I appreciate it. Sure. The, uh, the question I have is, it seems like you were saying that there, there's up to three A's per lot. And that's the first time I heard that. I've always heard two. Could you just expand on that? Yeah, uh, you sort of were fading in and out, but I think I got the gist of what you were asking. You're wondering if you heard it right, that you could do up to three uh, dwelling units on one lot. And just to be clear, you can do, uh, you can have your primary residence, you can have a JADU, and you can have an ADU on the same lot. Um, not to be confused with two ADUs on the same lot. Perfect. Not you mean not three ADUs on the same lot. Right. Just so one junior, one regular, and the dwelling. Right. That, that that's consistent with what I understood. Yeah. Thank mm -hmm. you very much. Sure. Okay. Next we have uh, David Chan. David, you can unmute yourself. Hi, David. Hi. Uh, thank you. Uh, so uh, my question is on property tax. You didn't cover that, so I don't know whether this is something that you feel comfortable speaking to it. Uh, would building an ADU affect the property tax for the entire property? Yeah, you know, um, that's something I, I, I haven't really looked into, um, and um, I'm not sure if, if any of the other panelists may want to speak on that. Um, this is Julia Klein uh, with the city of San Mateo. Um, we generally recommend, um, you know, property owners to co contact the county assessor's office for details on how the addition of a JADU or an ADU may affect, you know, the calculation of, of property taxes, um, given that they, they're the ones that um, have the regulations for that. The city does not administer the uh, property taxes. Okay, thank you. Okay, next up we have Thomas Morgan. Thomas, would you like to unmute yourself? Hi, Thomas. Hi, thanks for the presentation. Sure. I had a, uh, my question, it seems like the front yard ADUs are very unpopular and uh, I'm here, I've heard sight line issues, but then when I'm walking through neighborhoods, it seems like, you know, there's things like hedges that are very big between houses and it seems like that in itself would create a sight line issue. So mm -hmm. I'm wondering if there's an opportunity to revisit the front yard. And if not, and the sight line's an issue, it seems like there should also be some sort of regulation around fences because down the road, I mean, just maybe 10 years out, I'm thinking people put the ADU in their backyard. And they're like, ah, oh, I really miss my backyard. And then they don't really use their front yards now. So then they're going to yeah. reclaim that space. And if they put a six or eight foot fence in their front yard, then Right. Yeah. It's attractive. <laughs> so we do have um, fence uh, regulations that um, stipulate how tall in a fence can be in your front required front yard area, um, as well as um, hedges or any visual obstruction. So we do regulate that. Um, we do allow ADUs in the buildable front yard area, not to be confused with the uh, required front yard, meaning like up, built up to your front property line. 
um, we don't allow for that. So just the same way that you could build, uh, you, you can do an addition to your primary residence, um, you can you know, build up to a certain extent. Um, you could do the same with an ADU, so long as it's not encroaching into the front yard setback, which in most of our zoning districts is anywhere from 15 to 25 feet. Okay, Philip, our next talker is Anna Louie. Hi, Anna. Hi, thank you for this presentation. Sure. Uh, I might, have that, and so I need you to be quiet. <laughs> um, sorry. Yeah, no worries. Some cities have, uh, have invested in uh, pre-approved ADU plans, and I was wondering mm -hmm. if that's something San Mateo is considering or not. Um, yeah, it's definitely something we're considering. Um, we're still s s studying it. Um, I think we're open to that. I'm not, um, uh, our community development director may want to um, speak on that. I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? She was wondering if we have, if the city has any interest in uh, prefab um, ADUs. Oh, right. Um, so yeah, we have talked about that quite a bit and I believe we are still Yes. We're exploring options so that yep. we can see what's available. We're looking at prefab. We're also looking at just um, the possibility of pre-approved designs or um, pre-approved, a list of pre-approved contractors. Um, and so there's different ways that we're looking at um, streamlining and providing avenues for folks um, to have some consistency and some of the work kind of ready to go to make it a little easier. Um, and so that is something that we're gonna be looking at um, more deeply. Thank you. Okay, next we have um, Chuni Yu. Chuni, do you wanna unmute yourself? Hello. Hello, thank you for taking my question. Thank you for sure. the presentation as well. I'm the designer representing the owner their uh, residence in San Mateo and they wanted to convert it, uh, their garage, one story garage as a, um, the second story uh, garage and like dwelling unit on top is mm -hmm. it possible to build? And then what is it uh, maximum height? And then can we add uh, more garage after we uh, back in expansions for ADU? Um, and one other question is, uh, is the ADU required to have a separate uh, mechanical electrical uh, plumbing, you know, like equipment? like a pump stations, like we just wanted to make sure is it possible to connect the, um, the water resource from the primary uh, buildings. Thank you. Sure, so with regard to sort of your uh, design proposal, um, yes, you can build a um, ADU on top of a, a garage. Um, given the fact that it's a new structure, it needs to abide by the four foot side and rear yard setback requirements, um, as well as um, the underlying or the daylight plane requirement of the underlying zoning district. Um, but you can, that's certainly um, um, an option that's available to you. Um, with regard to um, plumbing um, and um, plumbing hookups and whatnot, um, Alice, I'm, I'd like to tap your shoulder to try to respond to that. Yeah, so uh, we do allow connection to the main house. However, you do need a separate um, access for the ADU uh, tenant to be able to um, control um, the MEP if there's anything happen. So even though it's connecting to the main house, you need to provide a way of um, certain access for the tenants in the ADU so then they can have the access to the MEP main control. All right, thank you. Uh, is that, uh, the, can we add additional garage? They want to have a like two car garage from the one car garage. Um, yeah, I mean, I can say, you know, obviously having not looked at um, the existing conditions there, but just sort of speaking at a high level. Um, yes, there's always the potential of um, being able to expand your garage, but uh, we'd have to um, obviously take a look at the existing conditions, how much floor area allowance you have remaining, um, uh, you know, where your setback, where your structure is built, um, things of that nature. But um, mm -hmm. just in concept, yes, it's possible. 
Okay, sounds great. Thank you so much. And then is it, uh, can you confirm one more time what is the maximum height for oh, this? Uh, yeah, so without a um, an updated ordinance in place, we're defaulting to the maximum building heights of the underlying zoning district. Um, so I, I'm just guessing um, that you um, are living in one of our R1 um, or R2 zoning districts. Okay. And as such, it would be um, 24 feet to plate, 32 feet overall. Okay, sounds great. Sure. Okay, the next uh, person is we have is Richard Hedges. Richard, would you like to unmute yourself? Hi, Richard. Yes, I would. Thank you. Great presentation. I've very been very positive over the years and wanting to see more of the ADUs. Uh, I just have a question and a, and a couple of comments. Uh, sure. So I was a little concerned that being able to do the attached ADUs, someone could uh, actually apply for an ADU and then convert it into just a much larger home. And uh, this, the question about the taxes uh, on the separate ADU, I actually was in a presentation where they said that the underlying uh, uh, original uh, date and cost of the home would remain for the land and the original house, and then the ADU would be assessed separately. Uh, I'd still want to follow Judith's lead and check with the county. Um, and I uh, uh, just wanted to say that there are companies, there's a great one in uh, Vallejo who are doing prefab ADUs. And if we get to the point where we can do that, you could get one to just set on a foundation. Thank you. Sure. So uh, real quick, Richard, to respond to your initial um, comment um, it, regarding um, there being concern if someone did an attached ADU and then um, later converted it back to just additional living space. So uh, whenever you um, submit an application for a uh, ADU, uh, which is through a building permit application, part of that requirement, uh, submittal requirement is that you um, record a deed restriction with the County of San Mateo. And the and part of that one of the restrictions that are in that deed restriction speak to um, the ADU uh, remaining um, as an ADU, um, and that care that runs with the land. Um, so from property owner to property owner, so um, they may change it, but um, they're required to keep it as an ADU. Okay, our next speaker is Diane Whitaker. Diane, would you like to unmute yourself? Hi, Diane. Hi, thank you. Um, I'm wondering if the new state regulations and the laws, um, what they're, how they deal with taking an existing detached storage and garage building and converting it to an accessory dwelling unit, and specifically how that relates to um, square footage and mm. setbacks and heights. Yeah, so uh, the state is actually very permissive in that uh, in that regard. So um, I don't. Do you have a square footage number on that garage or that accessory structure you're referencing? Um. Well, either way, it, let's just say it's uh, two thousand square feet. Okay. Um, if it's 2,000 square feet, um, the, the state allows you to convert that entirely to um, an ADU um, without there being an impact uh, to any floor area considerations. Um, now, you can't expand that um, uh, beyond that, but um, you can convert uh, a large accessory structure um, with no um, impact to FAR. So the, the existing setbacks would be... Um, permissible. Yes, if it's if it's a legal structure, if if it was legally permitted, um, it can maintain the legal non-conforming setbacks. Um, and what if if the uh, the structure was built so long ago that it's not in reusable condition? You, can you build new on the same footprint? Yeah. So the state allows um, if you're converting or if you're either converting or building a new ADU, you can utilize the setbacks of the uh, structure and maintain the setbacks, even if they're encroaching within that four foot uh, setback area, so long as you build in the same location 
into the same dimensions of that previous structure. Would uh, dimensions also um, include the height? No. No, okay, thank you. Yep. Okay, our next uh, speaker is Lucian Latu. Lucian, you wanna unmute yourself? Thank you. Um, uh, thank you for the presentation, it's very sure. insightful. And um, it's following uh, the gentleman who spoke earlier about um, the uh, additional, or having ADUs as, as far as, um, or I think it was the connection to the primary uh, dwelling. Have we, has the city put into consideration, because I know that we that the city has been working on the sewer lines, mm -hmm. the infrastructure, infrastructure, and I know they've, they're doing that here, they were doing it here at 19th Avenue Park, but um, have they put into consideration the addition of ADUs and the impact of that on the water services. infrastructure? Yeah, all services actually, yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure if I have that answer. Um, and Alice, I'm not sure if that's under your purview. It, so, um, maybe a public works. Think yeah, it's more public works because I know public works right now to encourage homeowners to upgrade the sewer lateral and there is an ordinance that was in place last year in December to encourage home or kind of require homeowner to upgrade the sewer lateral. But in terms of the main sewer line, um, I'm not quite sure their um, process and uh, what they're doing right now. So um, it's more public works question. Um, I know there's a wastewater treatment plan upgrades, so maybe it's associated with this, you know, entire sewer line upgrades or maintenance. I could interject. This is Christina Horsberger. Um, I just wanted to point out as a very general, in a very general way, when we um, develop our infrastructure plans, they're generally done with the general plan in mind and with the different land use um, policies and codes that are in place. And since ADUs are allowed in single family and other residential um, neighborhoods and on residential properties, um, it would stand to reason. And I would hope that they actually did account for that um, because it's generally accounted for as we um, form policy and consider changes to the city. Mary, before you uh, go to the next question, I just wanna circle back on one of the previous questions. Um, uh, I believe they were asking about um, utilizing um, legal non-conforming setbacks and if um, the dimensions or um, does it account for structure, new structure being built above it. And I, I just want to make clear that any new structure beyond the dimensions of the existing structure uh, are required to abide by the four foot side and rear setback. So you could potentially maintain the um, existing garage built at a foot away from the property line, but any new construction, including a second story, would need to be set back four feet uh, from the side and rear setbacks. Okay, um, Robert Miller has another question. Robert, sure. you want to unmute yourself? Yes, thank you. A couple of questions. The, the minimum efficiency ADU, is that uh, allowed in San Mateo? That would be the 150 foot. And related is the uh, non-standard doors and openings. Is that allowed in the um, um, Alice could probably answer both, but I will say a minute, uh, uh, the efficiency unit is allowed. Um, we're required to per the state. And then maybe Alice, you wanna respond to that um, non-standard door sizes. If it's an egress door, we still need to follow um, the code requirements, which is 32 inch clear. Um, but if other doors, um, it's not, um, it, it can be, you know, smaller size. But for egress door, I still need to meet the egress code, the exiting door. Thank you. That, that makes sense. I appreciate it. Great. Okay. Our next speaker is RK. RK, you want to unmute yourself? Hi, RK. Thank you. Uh, this is Roy. Sorry, I didn't know I'm going to ask questions. But um, uh, thanks for the presentation. I had two questions. One, um, can you elaborate more on the last slide? Uh, how, 
the the um, uh, the conditions to convert uh, or legalize the existing structures ADUs that may not be 100% up to code. Mm -hmm. uh, what is the process or conditions there? Mm -hmm. And second, is city considering uh, a process in which um, people in that situation can consult with the city to see what 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 are the options uh, without uh, the, the fear of penalty or something like that? Yeah, so um, I'll try to answer those in order. So um, with regard to, um, uh, I think you're mentioning uh, non-permitted um, structures or legal non-conforming structures? Um, I guess not permitted one. Let's say there is, uh, there is part of the house which is sure. similar to ADU from many years ago. So if there's, if you have a structure that has um, uh, code violations or code issues and needs to be brought up to speed. Um, you can defer certain code violations uh, from correct, having to correct certain code violations provided that the correction of the violation is not necessary to maintain um, health and safety regulations. So um, basically what that's saying is so long as it's not an issue of health and safety, um, you can potentially defer um, correcting that code violation for up to five years. The process is you have to um, request it uh, formally with the city, um, and then we'll start the process and work with you. Um, and then, I'm sorry, what was your last question? So, uh, I think in some states they have uh, some process that you could get um, feedback from the city to see if the condition that you mentioned uh, it, it, is met or you know if what are the processes to get some uh, existing structure legalized without uh, fear of you know uh, yeah. penalty do we have something uh, in plans yeah we definitely um as a city we're definitely willing our um perspective is definitely um trying to facilitate um you know bringing um structures um up to code and we're willing to work with the public um, um, to the greatest extent possible. I think, Alice, did you want to comment on that? Uh, yes, so if it's co-enforcement case, uh, we do have a, I think uh, one of our staff is working on the application form for you to apply and um, our co-enforcement officer and our building inspector will go on the site and identify um, all the health and like um, safety issues on site for you to um, correct so you can get the fire year extension and then they'll identify. Um, and we'll also contact fire inspectors. Sometimes there'll be a virtual or maybe on site to help identify the issues. Um, if that's what you're looking for, uh, we do have this program in place. Uh, so uh, if those uh, issues are identified, uh, correcting them will be then mandatory after this, or is just a, a confidential consultation, something like that? Uh, come, what you mean? It will be with the code case. I don't think it's confidential. What do you, um, in specifically, what? Yeah, I mean, it's not, there's no, it's not publicly noticed or anything like that. Okay. Um, Mm, but you still need to be building. I mean, if you're correcting, or um, you will still be in on, on file. So um, if someone requests a public uh, records, I'm I'm sure it's still um, you know with the house. It's still the records still there. Got it. Thank you. Okay. Uh, next uh, speaker is Heather Key. Heather, you want to unmute yourself? Hi, Heather. Yes, hi. Um, yeah, thank you for the opportunity to ask question and giving us um, really scope of everything about our property. Um, my question is similar to RK about converting, about not, like legalize the existing union to be, um, I, is a part of, a part of the house. So is that means has to be a junior ADU if I'm legalizing it? Okay, so I, I guess I'm not, um, maybe you can restate it again. I'm, I'm not following along. Okay, so well, the, the house I, I have is, okay. 
um, you know, is is came with like a granny union. Okay. Uh-huh, However, uh-huh. that granny union is connect to the house. Okay. So so that means if I'm legalizing that granny union, that has to be junior ADU, correct? Well, does that unit have um, its own sanitation facility, like a bathroom? Yes. It has a kitchen? Yes. Okay. So uh, it can be an attached ADU, it sounds like. So it so attached ADU is not same as junior ADU, correct? Correct. Okay. So that means I'm not limited to that 500 square feet, correct? Um, correct. Okay. So then what's the process to, uh, to get that legalized? Well, you would submit a building permit. Uh, okay. So do I have to like remove, rebuild the kitchen or bathroom because the, they are already there? Like how does the legalized process so, work? Or I just, let me, let me add. Uh, so you, first of all, you need to identify uh, if you you can only, you need to determine if you want to do junior ADU or ADU. The process is slightly different because junior ADU is allowed to have internal communication, which means a door going to the main dwelling. If you do yeah. ADU, you it, we are consider them as a separate dwelling units. So you will need to have fire rating walls between your um, illegal granny unit to your main, main house, there's no door it's allowed, no uh, door communication allowed between two units. And when you prepare the um, building plan, you need to, assume, since it was not legally exist, so you need to provide a plan, existing plan, showing uh, how it was originally without the illegal work. And then you will provide a plan showing the work that you want to be, you want to legalize. And if there's anything that was legalized, um, not meeting the current code, you will need to upgrade them to meet the current code because it's it was built illegally, so it was not legally exist. Okay, uh, so the far walls, okay. I'm sorry, I, this is yeah. Zach, I'm sorry, I just wanted to interject. These questions may be best suited if you want to come in and speak to one of our technicians at the building counter um, because they're very project specific. Right. Um, the goal is to keep it at more of a policy level to weigh in, but um, we're happy to kind of work through these questions with you if you want to come in or engage with one of our, our, our techs at the, at the building or planning counters. Oh, that's awesome. Like, So is it an open a walk-in now or what do we need to make appointment or... Yes, our public counter is open, so you can you can come in during regular business hours. Got it. Thank you so much. Go ahead, or you can um, you can just contact me directly. I can give you more information. Uh, my email is hn at cityofsemateo dot org. Oh, got right. it. Thank you and, so much. And Heather, my my inform my contact information is that uh, will be provided at the end of this presentation too, so you can reach out to me directly too. Thank you. Sure. Um, uh, Mary, how many questions uh, do we look like we still have? So um, right now we have four people with raised hands. Uh, there's only one person who hasn't been able to speak. So um, okay. based on what you would like to do, we can have um, the last person who has not been able to ask a question, ask the question, and then maybe ask the rest to hold their questions towards the end of your presentation. Sure. Why don't we do that? Okay. Edward, Caitlin or Catlin, you can go ahead and ask your question, unmute yourself. Hi, Edward. Hi, uh, thanks. Thanks for this. Um, just wanted to ask whether the uh, city had considered any kind of incentives for actual habitation of ADUs or JADUs, because uh, one thing that I could see happening is property owners building ADUs. Um, as a form of you know something to put capital into but then not actually letting those adus address the the housing shortage that we have in the area um so i'm curious if the city is considering any kind of incentives yeah um we've um i'm not sure if we've considered that um but that's something certainly that we um can discuss um christina i don't know if you want to comment okay. on that yeah um, 
no, I think that that that's correct. We haven't considered that yet, but um, we, this is the, the the first outreach session that we're doing, and so we're taking all of your comments, and we are going to um, look into what we hear an interest in. So that's something we can take a closer look at. Okay, thank you. Okay, so Mary, I think we said we're going to hold off on the remaining questions, and and, um, and yeah, we have uh, we actually have one more. Um, Okay. person who has not been able to speak. So I'll allow Mark Rain. Um, you can go ahead and mute yourself. Yeah, hi. I just came to the meeting late here. Um, sure. Just got a question for you. Uh, with all this um, uh, incentive to work on ADUs, uh, have, has the city even uh, taken into account what the current vacancy rate of unoccupied, re of, uh, unoccupied rentals at this time? Because I'm seeing a lot of for rent signs. And uh, to be honest with you, I mean, I bought a house uh, in the Aragon area and it's, it's R1 mm -hmm. and I'm really not happy about that. I mean, if I bought if I wanted to buy a house in a, that were with multiple units, I would have bought in a different zoning. So uh, you want to explain that to me, please, those two items? Sure. So, well, the, the, to the first one, well, I guess they're both related. Um, so these requirements are um, established by the state. Um, and so we have to follow through uh, with uh, the direction the state provides. And so every city, every jurisdiction in, um, in the state um, has to abide by these state regulations. Um, so we don't have an option um, in terms of um, not allowing ADUs. Um, so that's, that's kind of where we're at in, that, in terms of um, vacancy rates. Um, it's almost... Um, um, it, it doesn't play a role in um, whether we can allow these uh, um, ADUs or not. Well, it may not play a role, but it would be set counter to counterproductive here if you're going into the thesis that ADUs are going to increase the, uh, the housing stock and when you don't have people to occupy that. Um, and again, going back into the, to the zoning, uh, I don't think it's proper. I mean, otherwise I would have bought an R2, R3 or commercial. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I understand. Um, but we, we are carrying out what the state is requiring of us. Okay. And I guess we need to go to the state. Okay, so um, was there any more questions? Uh, no, you can go ahead, Phil. Philip. Okay, great. So we're going to just um, move forward with our presentation here. Um, it's really we're just leading up to this um, uh, brief poll. Um, but um, I did want to just talk about the remaining um, areas of local discretion. So the new state laws were intended to uh, remove the regulatory uh, barriers and zoning controls imposed um, at the local level, and it limits the ability of a local agency to regulate ADUs. Um, with that said, a city still has some limited areas of remaining discretion. Um, a city can still apply development standards, including parking, height, setbacks, size, architectural review, um, and any standards that would prevent adverse impacts to um, historic properties. And the caveat uh, is, though, that whatever standard the local agency establishes, um, it cannot preclude the construction of the state exempted or by right ADU that we discussed earlier. Um, so with that said, uh, we'd like to ask you to participate and answer a few poll questions related to these remaining areas of discretion. So there's a total of nine poll questions um, that we'd like you to respond to. I'll provide you a brief question prompt and then ask you to respond to the question. So state law establishes that an ADU will be allowed or that an ADU will be allowed to be at least 16 feet in height. Um, our code currently defaults to the building height maximum specified by the underlying zoning district. Um, however, our existing ordinance was adopted during a time when uh, ADUs were not permitted in multifamily zoning districts and were restricted to just 640 square feet. Um, all of our residential zoning districts allow building heights well above 16 feet, so we can continue to default to the underlying zoning district. However, um, now that ADUs can be up to 1,200 square feet and built within four feet of a shared side and rear property line, we're really interested in hearing from the community how tall detached um, ADUs should be. 
And so provided here is a visual that will uh, help inform your answer. Each of the three examples provided uh, or provide a list of proposed maximum plate height and roof peak height, which coincide with the answer choices listed um, as A, B, and C. And Mary, if you could pull up poll question number one. So we're asking what should be the maximum building uh, height for a detached ADU? I would let folks know they can move around their screen too if they need to see the visual a little better. Um, yes. The poll, the, poll, the poll window can move. Just a few more votes. Can we ask that everyone vote? We're just three or four votes away. Mary, did we put a timer on this? Um, there's no timer on it, but um, I, it, we, it looks like everybody's pretty much voted who was going to vote. Okay, so great. I'll end the poll. Sure. And here's the result. And there's the result. Interesting. Okay. Okay, let's move on to our next um, question here. The state law mandates that ADUs are permitted ministerially through a building permit process. And while ADUs are exempt from um, discretionary review, it does allow for objective architectural standards to be imposed. Um, some examples of our existing local ADU ordinance, which can still be imposed, include offsetting windows from neighboring properties um, and requiring ADUs to be constructed of the same architectural style and exterior material and finishes as the primary residence. Um, with that in mind, we have the following two poll questions regarding objective architectural standards. Mary, can you please pull up poll question number two? What design features of a detached ADU should match the primary home? Select all that apply. Okay, we'll just give it a few more seconds here. Okay, good information. Um, Mary, we'll move on. Let me just share the results really quickly, Philip, yeah. so that they can see the results. Yeah. Um, Seems as though architectural uh, compatibility or uh, matching the architectural style of the primary residence is, is uh, important. Um, why don't we bring up poll question number three, Mary? Okay. So we're asking which of the following objective design standards for a two-story detached ADU should be required uh, to limit privacy impacts on neighboring properties? Select all that apply.
Okay, we'll give it a, just a few more seconds. Okay, Mary, I think we can end the poll. Okay. Good information. Okay. Why don't we move to our next poll question? Okay. Or poll, excuse me, don't pull it up just yet. Sorry. Okay. So currently state law specifies that cities which do not have a compliant ordinance in place must allow attached ADUs up to 50% of the size of the primary home and detached ADUs may be up to 1200 square feet. Um, it does specify that if we do establish a maximum ADU size that we must allow an ADU to be at least 850 square feet for a studio or one bedroom or at least 1000 square feet uh, for more than one bedroom. So Mary, can you please pull up poll question number four? We'd like to know, or please select what you feel the maximum size of an attached ADU should be. Okay, we'll give it just a few more seconds. Okay, Mary. Great. We really appreciate your participation in this poll. Um, uh, we just have a few more questions to go. Let me remove that. So the state allows cities to impose conditions on development scenarios when a detached ADU and a JADU are combined with a single family dwelling. So we sort of went through that scenario earlier in the presentation. This provision allows the local agency um, to impose restrictive conditions um, for the detached ADU as shown here. Um, and that is one, a total floor area limitation of not more than 800 square feet and two, a height limitation of 16 feet. So to be clear, the state allows um, a local agency to impose uh, either or uh, of these conditions. And so Mary, can you pull up poll question five? Yep. Which of these following should the city do? I think we're pretty much there, Philip. Okay, great. Oh, wait, here comes a couple more. All right. All right. Do you want me to stop it, Phil? Yes, please. Okay. Awesome. Okay, just a few more questions to go. Um, Individual parcel size uh, sizes in San Mateo's uh, residential zoning districts can range 
um, greatly um, from 2,500 square feet to up to three acres in size. State law specifies that a detached ADU can be up to a maximum of 1,200 square feet um, in size, provided there's adequate floor area allowance remaining on the lot. Um, Mary, can you pull up poll question number six? Sure. So we're interested in knowing what you feel the maximum size of a detached ADU should be. Okay, a few more seconds. Okay, Mary, I think we can stop. All right. Let's move on to our next um, slide. So most residential properties in San Mateo qualify for the state's parking exemption. Um, uh, number one, which was the um, and when your ADU is located within a half uh, mile walking distance to public transit. Um, however, as noted uh, earlier, uh, approximately 10% or roughly 2,600 properties located in one of our residential zone uh, districts would not qualify for that exemption. Mary, can you pull up poll question number seven? We'd like to know, should the city exempt all ADU development from required off-street parking? Yes or no? We'll wait to the one minute mark, Mary. Okay. I think you have all the participants, but one that have answered. Okay, it says 40 of 42. We can go ahead and stop now, Mary. Great, that was fun, that was neck and neck. So state law permits a property owner to develop their lot with both an, a JADU and an ADU, um, in addition to the single family residence. Um, the increase of dwelling units on a single lot may have a corresponding impact uh, to on-street parking in our uh, neighborhoods, in our residential neighborhoods. Um, as such, additional on-site parking allowance may need to be considered to offset uh, potential impacts to on-street parking. Mary, can you pull up uh, poll question eight? So we're asking this, which uh, should the city consider um, in terms of um, which of the following um, parking allowances um, for properties being developed with an ADU or JADU? Select all that apply. Okay, 
Just a few more seconds, Mary. Still trickling in. Okay. Great, good information. Let's move to um, our last poll question. One second, Philip. Mm -hmm. So oh, I'm sorry, let me let me give the question prompt first. Okay, no worries. So, so JADUs may be created within the walls of a proposed or existing single family residence, including attached garages. However, attached garages which are converted to JADUs are not subject to the replacement parking exemption that ADUs are, meaning um, they can be required uh, to provide parking. So can you bring up our last poll question, number nine? Yes. We're asking, should JADU conversions of attached garages be required to provide uh, replacement parking? Yes or no? All right, great. Okay. Well, we thank you. Uh, we really appreciate you uh, sticking with us through the duration of this workshop. Um, we do actually have a few more questions, Philip. So if- Sure, um, if, 720, if, I'm, I'm happy to stay on the line and, and respond to questions. Can okay. you interject for just one moment? Sure. Um, Philip, if we have some time, I, or I wonder from, from our attendees, if we ha could have a show of hands. For our first polling question, we had 29 out of 42 mm. responses. And I was wondering if perhaps um, some folks needed a little more time with the slide. So is there a way maybe we could get a show of hands? I can actually if, relaunch it. Um, can you? Yeah, I can. So why don't I do that? Well, should we see if there's an appetite for it? I don't know if there's just maybe one or two or or if folks really would need to see it again well there's a bunch of raised hands already for questions so okay. Um, okay. um maybe we want to go back to the slide too so we can have the visual that goes with it and are you talking about the demographics question or the building height question? i'm talking about the building height question okay thank okay. you so i'm just gonna should i relaunch the poll or should you explain again philip um, I think we can just relaunch the poll. Okay. Well, let me, yeah, okay. Sorry. I just yeah, did. no worries. Okay, so just to be clear, um, selection A is a 16 foot plate height um, and 24 roof peak. Selection B is 20 feet uh, plate height, a 20 foot plate height, 28 to roof peak. And selection C is effectively what we um, utilize in our R1 and R2 zoning districts now, um, which is a 24 foot plate and 32 foot roof peak uh, maximum. Okay, I think um, 35 or 38 is pretty good. Yeah. Thank okay. you. Okay. 
So we had questions. Uh, yeah. Some remaining questions. So let me give me one second. Sure. Um, so there's. I'm going to go first with um, Colin McLaughlin, who has not asked a question yet. So Colin, you can go unmute yourself. Thank you so much. Sure. Hi, I have Colin. a question. Um, a lot's been a lot of this to, has been based on the R1 and R2 mm -hmm. zoning. I happen to be in, a, in an area that's R3. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm wondering how that impacts and changes some of these, especially in light of the poll we just took. Thank you. Yeah. Um, when our, uh, our existing ordinance um, was written during a time, again, I, I mentioned this earlier, but it was written during a time when ADUs were not permitted in our multifamily zoning districts, which is which are your R3, R4, R5 zoning districts. Um, so with the new state law, it sort of creates a loophole in terms of uh, building height. Um, uh, without an existing ordinance in place, we're defaulting to the, um, the heights of um, the underlying zoning district. So if you're in an R3, you could potentially build a larger, um, a taller ADU. Uh, than the 24 and 32 foot roof peak. Did that make sense or did you need me to clarify? Yeah, yeah it, it, thank you. Um, does it have any impact on the size? I guess it wouldn't of, or the amount of square footage of lot coverage? No, that, it, 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 yeah, it doesn't, uh, wouldn't affect that. Thank you. Sure. Sounds like it's a bit more open in an R3 area in terms of height allowance. Yeah. Okay. Okay, Philip. Um, the next um, person will be, let's see, Jim Whelan. Hi, Jim. Yes, thank you. Uh, um, can we go back to that slide? That that showed for the height questions. Sure. I'm, I'm actually confused. I asked a question earlier about the, uh, the plate, the plate, the plate height. So yes. If we look at a, I see the plate height at 16 feet mm -hmm. and the dormer seems to be in the same plane as the, as the regular wall. So how is it that the dormer plate can be above? Uh, it, it's in the same, if, if, a, I, I, I was expecting to see the wall set back somehow or another, but, how is it that the dormer plate is allowed to go above 16 feet? It seems yeah. to be in the same wall. Well, you'll have to forgive the, you know, the flat 2D image, but that that what's being shown is supposed to be representative of, um, you know, a much uh, narrower dormer. Um, when you have a a wall, um, a primary wall, like along the first where the, the eave of the lower eave is, that would be considered the primary wall and the plate line, not not the dormer, uh, not the not the plate line of the dormer. So if I can ask a question. So let's say that the length of the main wall was 30 feet, just as an example. Saying if the dormer was six or 10 feet, that would be allowed. But if the dormer were 28 feet, it would not be allowed. Is, is that right, right. And we have, um, well, I'm thinking of um, restrictions in the daylight plane, but um, yeah. Um, uh, we, so the, it, dormer, the dormer length restrictions would be applied the same as the, in the existing building code. You could have some level above. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, provi it, provided if, if it's in the, uh, if it's encroaching into a daylight plane, um, we had, we'd have to review it, uh, you know, individually and look at it. Uh, we certainly had like fake, fake eave lines or fake roof lines where, um, that sort of looked like this, to be honest. Um, um, but what we had in mind here uh, was showing uh, a dormer um, that's um, secondary to the primary uh, wall assembly. So if we did a side elevation, that dormer would not, it would be limited to the percentage you could have of the length of the house? Yeah, it would be, I, I don't know what that percentage is. It would be narrower, narrower in length. Okay, great, thank you very much. Or in width, I should say. 
Okay, there's a couple of people who haven't had a chance to ask questions and we're getting sure. close to the 730 line. So I'll have Becky um, unmute yourself. You can go ahead and speak. Hi, Becky. Becky? Okay, I'm gonna um, just lower her hand and um, go to the next um, person who didn't speak. It's, let's see, Antonia. Oh wait, no, yeah, Antonia. Antonio Martinez. You can Hi, Antonio. Ahead. Hi, everyone. Thanks for uh, the presentation. It's great, by the way. Sure, thanks. Uh, quick, quick question. Is there a difference as far as property taxes uh, increase, whether it's a regular ADU or a, a JDU? Yeah, I think that's similar to a question that we uh, received earlier, and I, I think I imagine the answer would be somewhat similar in that um, we would direct you to the county assessor's office um, for tax assessments, uh, tax assessment questions. Yeah, I would like to just take a sec to ask folks if there's a question that's already been asked or a question that's specific to your property or specific to something that you're thinking of doing that we hold on to those and we can address those one-on-one. -on -one. Um, you can contact us directly and that our questions tonight focus on the policy questions that we've set before you. That's what we're really looking for input on tonight. And we're happy to answer any questions you have about a project you're thinking of offline. Okay, any, uh, any other questions, uh, Mary? It is 7.30. With that said, there are four more hands raised. And again, going with Christine's line, if it's a specific question, I don't know, do you want to continue or at this point it's 7.30? If, yeah, if it's a policy related question to, uh, related to the things we were discussing tonight, I'm happy to answer. Any other um, project specific questions, um, please, my information's on the, the slide here, please reach out and contact me. I'm happy to um, uh, discuss with you your project individually. Okay, so that um, precluded one hand. So I'm going to allow RK to go ahead and ask his question. Uh, thank you. Uh, so, uh, um, can you explain one more time for garage conversion? Uh, if it is uh, converted to ADU or JADU, there is a still that uh, square footage limit for both. And if yes, can a garage be converted to JADU plus ADU to increase the um, uh, footage? Uh, <laughs> I'd have to, um, RK, why don't you uh, take my email address and, and reach out to me with that specific question and we can sort of walk through um, exactly what your, um, wanting to know thank you yeah okay next we have uh Ch chun he you you can unmute yourself chun he um so thank you so much for taking my question i, I don't want to um take so much time but i just wanted to make sure jd <laughs> junior dwelling unit it's just allowed to have access door from the primary building and no uh, bathroom required. Is that correct? Is it allowed to have access to the primary residence and no bathroom? Yes. Yeah, well, by nature, uh, a JADU is a converted space within a single family residence. So it would have access. Um, and and it's also not required to have its own sanitation. It can share, uh, I should say, its sanitation, its bathroom with the primary residence. Okay, so can, if we need a bathroom for the primary uh, unit, additional one, should we have to get permit for uh, expansion uh, building process? Yes. Not, okay, thank you so much. Sure. Okay, and the last raised hand is uh, Lucian Latu. Go ahead, Lucian. Oh, thank you so much for uh, taking my question. Um, actually, it's more of like uh, because uh, this is something that's new to us as as a city, um, and we don't know. And there's interact interact actions between the county and city policies and ordinances and what have you. 
um, for for the next meetings like this, if we could also have representation from the county with regards to the things that would affect us, like property taxes, because I, I have a feeling this is going to continue to be a question that's asked. And rather than um, having us each go contact the county, but having a represent, representative from the assessor's office, property or whatever, presence at these meetings would be really helpful to ask those questions too, considering that it's it's new to everybody. And um, if we want people to do the ADU and if we want people to do it properly. And I, yeah, I, I think if we have a, have. sure. I think the, the purpose of this meeting was to discuss the policies that relate to our city individually in regard to our, our local ordinance um, and tax assessments that are not uh, necessarily a part of that. If we do a larger sort of ADU workshop, just in terms of, you know, how to build an ADU, how to go about it, um, we certainly can invite the county um, staff to come and participate. Um, but for the purposes of this meeting, um, um, I, I don't think we'll be asking them to join. Thanks, Lucien. Okay. Thank you. Okay, well, once again, we, we thank you uh, for participating. Um, I wasn't expecting to go uh, the full hour and a half, but I really appreciate all the participation, um, the feedback that we got um, through the polls. That's very informative and will help us uh, shape um, uh, a draft ordinance, uh, once again, that we'll likely be bringing to city council um, towards the end of this summer. Um, so appreciate it. Thank you. My contact information's on the screen. Please reach out to me if you have any questions. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.